Uh, good evening, calling to order the planning board meeting for January 4th um, for the city of Brockton. I have to first read an opening statement. This meeting is being recorded, uh, recorded in accordance with the government order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law chapter 38, section 20. Real-time public participation and comment can be addressed to the planning board utilizing the Zoom virtual meeting software for remote access. This application will allow users to view the meeting and send a comment or question to the chair via the question and answer function. Submitted text comments will be read into the record. For those of you joining by phone, press star nine. If you wanna ask a question, please raise your hand. A copy of this recording will be on the city's web pages. All votes will be done via roll call to ensure account accuracy. Okay. So first order of business, did everyone Planning board members review the minutes from the prior me previous meeting. Yes. 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 Can I get a motion? Motion to approve uh, an acceptance of the minutes of the meeting from December 7, 21. Second. Okay. All right. Um, roll call. James Sweeney. Yes. Larry Hassan. Yes. Samantha Broyd. Yes. Marita Das. Yes. Tony Gonzalez, yes. Okay. And I apologize. Should I uh, go backwards and do an introduction? Yeah, you should just yes. call the roll. Okay. I'm uh, jumping the gun here. So um, introduction of the planning board meetings, please uh, recognize your attendance. James Sweeney? Here. Larry Hassan? Here. Samantha Broyce? Here. Marita Das? Here. Okay, and then we have Chief Williams, Rob May, and Pam Gurley with us. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, Pam, do you want to take on the ANRs? We have no ANRs, no lot releases, and nothing that needs to be signed. Okay, perfect. Um, quick review of the agenda. So we have Scott just got here. Welcome, Scott. Um, so we have items requesting continuance, permission to return to ZBA for 6870 Field Street, continued to February 1. Site plan approval for 15 Rutland Square, continued to February 1. We I have doubt that'll even be heard in February, Madam Chair. Okay. It needs uh, to be plan revision all right uh for anyone here to to hear site plan approval for 466 forest ab that has been withdrawn we have a site plan approval for 135 elliott street we have a definitive subdivision for 50 farrington street and then last we have a site approval plan for 1208 west chestnut street okay so our, is the applicant here for 135 Elliott Street? Is that Scott? Yes, ma'am. Hello. Yeah, board members, uh, Scott Ferry of Homegrown Engineering. Uh, what we have for you tonight is a site plan uh, for a proposed residential development at 135 Elliott Street. We have proposed six residential units uh, spread out over two uh, two separate buildings. Uh, there's an existing industrial building uh, on our subject property that we've divided or in the process of dividing. Uh, the zone line runs uh, right parallel to Elliott Street. So the front of our property is zoned R2 and the back of our property is zoned industrial. So uh, we've been before you folks way back probably a year ago with a preliminary subdivision to divide the property uh, like it's shown on the plan is lots A, B, and C. And uh, the plan would be for the existing industrial building to remain under lot C with all of its parking. And then our two proposed buildings will sit on lots A and B. Uh, we have parking behind lots, uh, the buildings on A and B to support those six residential units. And then all of the existing parking for the uh, for the industrial building that's going to remain and remain in uh, in operation as it is now. It's uh, 
It's called Banners, and they're a uh, kind of an industrial janitorial supply company uh, is what they do. So they do a lot of shipping. Uh, back in the day, they did a lot of uh, a lot of work off of the railroad, which doesn't necessarily work now. So it's a lot of shipping, uh, mainly to the the bigger hospitals in Boston, uh, state police, things like that. Uh, so that business is going to stay. Uh, we're looking for site plan approval, uh, as I said, of those two buildings for the six residential units. Uh, we went through conservation commission already uh, back last spring. Uh, we received conservation approval. The project uh, was reviewed by Beta Engineering through the conservation commission. We received their blessing and we received an order of conditions from conservation probably about September of this year. Uh, so that plan right there that Rob has uh, in front of you pretty much lays it out. We've got a sidewalk off of Elliott Street to get to our six units and then parking behind. You know, there's no uh, no sugar coating yet. It is pretty close. Uh, that area that Rob's flagging up there, it's pretty close to the industrial building. We're going to have a fence going across uh, the back of our parking lot. That's only going to be about six feet or so. Uh, eight feet actually from the existing industrial building. So it's, it is kind of right on top of it, but uh, that's the best we can do with the zoning requirements for parking space size and uh, travel width requirements and to give the building a little bit of setback from Elliott Street. So it's, it's certainly not a perfect situation, but it's a kind of a dense neighborhood Elliott Street is with this existing building here. That's, uh, it's kind of the best we could do. So that's uh, a quick, uh, version of it. I feel like I'm talking really fast. I just flew in down the highway. So I'm, uh, I feel like I'm still speeding at 75 miles an hour. So I think that about covers everything. Madam Chair, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to, uh, to answer them. All right. Thank, thank you, Scott. So glad to hear bed is good and conservation is good. Um, the only piece we're missing is the sign off by the city engineer. That's going to be a common theme tonight, Madam Chair. Uh, just looking quickly for my notes. I mean, you know, we, we have the latest letter uh, from the city engineer uh, was dated December 9th. We made the changes, got it back to the city engineer. We actually sat with the city engineer to go over the changes. And uh, that was on uh, just the week before Christmas. So we submitted everything on the uh, on the 13th and we're just waiting to hear from from the city engineer uh i know it's holiday season all of that but we we just haven't had any luck at all uh getting a response since that letter from him on december 9th we uh as part of this submission we submitted our letter uh the engineer has about four or five uh comments that he made we've addressed them all uh i mean in and in, in a you know in a perfect world, if I was begging and pleading, I would ask if we can, you know, get some kind of conditional approval just so we don't have to keep putting things off another month. And then we're subject to a blizzard on February 1st and that meeting gets canceled. And, uh, you know, we completely understand the city engineer, everybody has taken time to review the plans and it is the right way to do it, to get his final blessing. So it, so we're not blowing off his comments and, and giving it the, uh, the attention it deserves. But it's just, uh, you know, the time constraints with you folks meeting once a month, it just, it just doesn't seem to work very well for us. So like I said, we've been waiting a couple of weeks, going on actually three weeks for a response. We don't have one. Uh, you know, we're confident that we've made all of the changes that he was looking for, certainly after sitting with him and going over it. Uh, you know, we feel like in this case, with a project going through, you know, almost $10,000 worth of review from beta with the Conservation Commission, uh, you know, that we've met everything engineering wise, the project still has to come before you folks for another approval for definitive subdivision. So there's still uh, another step. It, it probably doesn't have quite the amount of information that this plan has, but we still have to come back before you folks in the next couple of months for definitive subdivision. So uh, that's what we would ask and request of the board is that we can get some kind of a conditional approval, uh, you know, contingent upon a, a blessing from the engineers department. I certainly understand your position and a conditional approval sounds appropriate to me. Are there questions from other planning board members? Madam uh, I have Chair. One, Scott. Oh, I'm so sorry. Right. 
No, go ahead, go ahead, Sam. Uh, I have one, Scott, just really quickly. I know that you said that you reached out to the um, city engineer. Any idea when you would be able to get in contact with him? No, uh, you know, we've emailed him. Uh, our first email, I, I've got him here, was on 1214 all the way through to last week. Uh, we copy Pam and Rob on our emails just so, uh, you know, just so, <clears throat> honestly, so you don't have to take my word for it, just so everybody's in the loop. Uh, so no, as far as when we get an answer, I couldn't tell you. We did reach out last week just to, you know, I, I guess remind the engineering department that the meeting was tonight and we were hoping for, for a blessing for tonight's <laughs> meeting, uh, but we haven't received a response from that email. Well, you've made good effort. Um, I think some, Jim, you had a question or was that Larry? Oh, it was Larry, Madam Chair. Uh, Scott, just um, Sam Ambrose kind of answered part of my question when you were going to maybe hear from the engineer, but I remember when we first looked at this plan, so all the parking is behind the building, the new, right? So, so it's going to be between the building and run up against that line between the industrial, yeah, right? The That's where all your, and the driveway right. comes in. I'm, I'm having a hard time seeing it. Maybe just there's, my old eyes. Yeah, like there, there's, there's an existing the driveway there, and we're right. doing a good job highlighting it. And okay. what we're doing is we're kind of closing that existing driveway down. It's kind of just a big open driveway. So right. we're it's just a big open parking down to a, And most of our parking for the residential properties, there's 12 spaces across the back. Uh, so we've got those spaces, and then we have three spaces along the side. Uh, that would be for visitors parking. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of parking, Mr. Hassan. There's right. uh, you know plenty of parking, and then the industrial you know the trucks would go through there to to get to the warehouse, and the warehouse employees would park off to the side of that area where where Rob is flagging it up. So we've got you know we we've got a lot of spaces on the plan, and to be honest with you, there's a boatload more spaces we could show if we wanted to right. to kind of go crazy showing it. But there's uh, you know there's there's plenty of room, plenty of room for the for the residential units and a little bit of guest parking to go with them as well. Okay. And you said you've already um, got approval from conservation committee. Cause I somewhere I remember along the line where we looked at this a while back, there was a concern about it being in the flood zone or whatever. Yeah. Just... Yep. Yep. If you go, uh, if Rob flips us to, I think sheet C4, uh, but there is, there's the, uh, the brook that runs alongside our property, which is our, uh, our property right property line and there's a flood zone associated with it uh in this case it's given a, a specific elevation to the flood zone so it kind of bows out into our property a little bit so as part of our conservation filing we were doing a little bit of filling of the floodplain and then compensating way in the back that little those black heavy corridors right, right where rob is showing okay. is to simplify it is basically an area that we dig out to uh to make up for the flood storage that we would be using so and as you said, that was all reviewed by Bader and approved right. by Bader okay. and the Conservation Commission. That's all my questions. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. Other questions? Um, Madam Chair, I just wanted to say that um, we have been working with Scott and uh, he has uh, made all the recommendations that we had requested. Um, and as he said, we're just waiting to hear something from CK. Okay. Thank you. I guess, yeah, I guess that kind of answers my question. For uh, This actually abuts future ex expansion into the, um, mm -hmm. the larger project for the city, right, Rob? Uh, yes, it does. It uh, abuts the uh, Trout Brook Redevelopment District, which is directly to the south. Mm -hmm. um, this property owner does own some property that uh, is adjacent, and we want to see that develop. So um, working with him, we hope that uh, we can continue to be good neighbors. All right. Thank you. Okay, is there a motion? Motion to approve. Madam Chair, can I just ask that you um, put in a condition? Yes. That um, the plan is not signed until we get verification because there may be another change. To who knows. Right, Abs that's the plan. So, um, Jim, just want to add that condition, please. Yeah, they need, so let's rewind that again. The condition needs to be from uh, which person again? The city engineer needs to sign off and, on this plan. Before. Okay, with, with the city engineer uh, sign off? 
Okay. So, so motion to approve with the city engineer to, to sign off on, on the project. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Roll call, James Sweeney? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. Samantha Broyce? Yes. Rita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. All right. Thank you very much, folks. Thanks for your understanding. Thank you. You're welcome. Now chase down the city engineer and get what you need. We'll keep working on it. And chocolates. Yeah. <laughs> we won't have this problem anymore, Madam Chair, because everybody's, we've changed the process. This process doesn't work as everybody will be coming back the following month with their changes to the tech review board. So, and if all the changes are made, they should be there for a total of five minutes. Beautiful. Great. Okay. All right. Uh, next is 50 Farrington Street, a definitive subdivision. Applicant Domingos Lopes, Representative J.K. Holmgren Engineering. Uh, again, thank you, Madam Chair. Board member Scott Ferrier, Holmgren Engineering. Uh, 50 Farrington Street, in the same situation, we're uh, awaiting a letter from the city engineer that we've been waiting on for the same time. We, uh, we received his letter. We've had a, a couple of uh, back and forths uh, with comments. We, we just don't have his final blessing yet. Uh, I guess to, to simplify it, it's a, a plan that, again, you folks saw back uh, late last spring, early summer for a preliminary subdivision. We divided the property as shown into, into two lots. Uh, existing house number 50 is a three family and we proposed a two family uh, next door to it. Uh, so we got a, 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 a preliminary approval from you folks, went to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, they had a couple of comments. They, uh, their biggest concern uh, was parking for the existing three family. Right now they've kind of essentially have a, a single lane driveway. Uh, and I think a lot of people park in the front. So the Board of Appeals main concern, you know, which is their typical concern on these multifamily homes is having a, a substantial parking area. So what we did was we proposed a parking area behind the existing house number 50. Uh, so we have that. So that, that, that's really the biggest uh, difference in this plan from your, your typical easy lot division was proposing a parking area. With that parking area, there's curbing, there's drainage to handle the increased uh, runoff from the, from the new parking. So we've got that parking area that provides six spaces for the existing three family home at number 50. And then on our proposed lot B, it's a uh, just a conventional side by side duplex with a proposed 20 foot wide driveway for each unit. Uh, so we've, you know, we feel like we have a, a decent plan. Like I said, we've gone back and forth with the city engineer a couple of times, uh, have actually met with him on this. So uh, we're just waiting for his final blessing. Uh, just to go back to the Board of Appeals, the, the one issue that the Board of Appeals brought up that they've continued to bring up on not only in our cases, but all of these cases with residential properties is uh, that they really want to stop people from having a, a giant parking lot in front of the house. So what we've uh, come up with uh, along with the Board of Appeals is proposing the two driveways and then putting a section of vertical granite curbing separating the two driveways with a rail fence uh, behind that vertical granite curbing. So nobody can just pull off the street and park in front of the house. So there'll be two uh, distinct driveways and then a, a distinct green area in front of the house separating them. So it'll uh, it'll look a little bit better. So we're, we're trying to do this on all of our projects now, as I said, as uh, discussed with the Board of Appeals. So that's really about the only item that they came up with, the new parking area. We've done that. We've gone back and forth with the engineering department to come up with a drainage design uh, that they were happy with that meets stormwater management, even though it's kind of a small residential project. So that's uh, that's where it stands, Madam Chair. So I'll open up the questions and, and you brought up the drainage. Who did you, who's happy with the drainage plan? You put um, well, right now, nobody, well, I would say nobody's happy with it. We don't have the city engineer's blessing yet. As I said, we've gone back, you know, we went back and forth with him. We got his comments. Uh, we originally just had kind of a dry well. He wanted what's called a storm scepter, which is kind of a, an expensive, it's about a $10,000 uh, structure that goes underground that cleans out the oil and uh, in sand before it gets into a leaching system. Uh, he wanted to do that. We agreed to it. So 
uh, that's really it. So as far as who's happy with it, I, I, I hope he's happy with it once he reviews it. Um, so it's a stor storm scepter and not French drains. Right, exactly. So what, so it's, it's small, well, but it's your, it's your typical drainage for a parking lot. Everything drains to the back left-hand corner into a catch basin. And then from the catch basin, it goes into the storm scepter. And then from the storm scepter, it goes into a big dry well. So it's a, a series of drainage structures that kind of clean out the water. And uh, then by the time it gets to the dry well, it's nice clean water that leaches into the ground and uh, handles all of the additional impervious surface. Okay. And Rob or Pam, did you see this change made to this plan pending Chike's re review, I guess? That is the latest plan we have. Yes, this is the latest plan. You can see that the topography shoots down in this direction. Um, I don't know if um, Chike has additional comments, but this is the catch basin that Scott was referring to. This exactly. area is, is uh, surrounded by a Cape Cod berm. Um, so that should is supposed to catch the water and run it here to the um, uh, catch basin. It then flows into the uh, storm scepter, which uh, allows for the uh, grit and um, materials, heavy materials to drop out and separate and oils go up, dirt goes down, and then it flows into the um, dry well or French drain, whatever you'd like to yep. call it. And is, is this guaranteed to prevent water draining down to the neighbor behind that part, those parking spaces? That's, that's how it's designed, Madam Chair. The, the curbing that we're proposing stops all the water from flowing on the abutting properties. It'll all get caught into our catch basin and then into the drainage system as Rob described. Um, just that's Scott, my, my biggest what, concern. Go ahead, Rob. Scott, what is the height of the Cape Cod berm? I don't believe that that's, is that a six inch? Yeah, it's six inch. It's typically 18 inches wide and six inches high. Okay. We could add that height to the plan uh, just to clarify, just to make sure they, they put in a six inch berm because you can get a three inch berm as well, uh, which could give the chance of the water kind of cascading over. So we'll, we'll certainly... Note that on the yeah, final plan the, that it should be a six inch curbing. Get the running rapids coming down this way, you know. It's, we want to stop it. For yeah. Sure. Yep. We can certainly add that. Yeah, I guess that's my question too, Scott. I just want to make sure that where it's sort of sloping here into yep. this catch basin, you know, that it's going to drain well, right? Uh, so that yep. we're not going to have any issues. And I don't know, you know, how we can sort of assure that, as Tony said, it's not going to be a problem. Yeah. I, I, I think that six inch curb, I mean, six inches, it's going to stop all the water and, and let it get into the catch basin. So I, I think if we go with that six inch high curbing, there's, uh, there's really no way the water is going to cascade to the abutting property. I, I really think that'll, that'll make sure that does not happen, that we won't have any impact on the neighbors. Uh, I have, sorry, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Uh, so, I know we uh, you didn't get the approval from city in engineer, but um, I was wondering that one catch basin will do the job or not because this is a huge area. It is. It's typically with the catch basins uh, in a bigger parking lot in the roadway. We space them out every three hundred feet. In this case, the back of the parking lot is sixty feet. So. Uh, it, it is a good size area, but it's still, it's, it's properly spaced. Uh, like I said, usually we try, we space them out at 300 feet and this from the lower, the lower right-hand corner of the parking lot to that catch basin is probably about 90 feet maybe in length. So we're, we're well under what that, uh, the engineering norm of 300 feet for spacing. So uh, really don't think we're going to have a problem with it. Okay. And it's all paved, right? Uh, paved area, like uh, tar. Yeah, yep, exactly. Bituminous concrete, black top, uh, which is, you know, the city doesn't, uh, the zoning bylaw doesn't allow us to go with gravel parking or, 
or any kind of a stone parking or grass or anything like that. It, it has to be a hard surface, either bituminous concrete, the blacktop, or a concrete uh, paving. So we, we have to have a, a hard surface for the parking areas. Mm -hmm. And also, oh, sorry, I have one more question. So uh, the driveway in front of the two family house, you said it's 20 feet wide and 25 feet um, length, right? Exactly. So, so, you, so I don't know, like uh, you were planning to uh, put like two cars parked there. If you, could, you do that, you know, then there wouldn't be much space to enter the house. You can at okay. least get two, you know, you can at least get two cars there easily uh, if they're larger cars. If you've got a little car, you could park four cars there, but the, the front door is, you know, right in the middle of the, right in the middle of the building with two separate doors to get to the left-hand and right-hand unit. So there's, uh, you know, there'll be a little walkway off of the, off of each of the driveways, but uh, there's certainly enough parking for two cars. And as I said, if you drive a nice little car, you could get four cars there. Yeah, like after two car, you will hardly get like maybe two feet at yep. the max. Yeah. So, yep. Yeah. It's tight. Uh, Scott, you, you did say that those two driveways up front, those have uh, curbing around? This curbing separating the two driveways just to prevent people from parking between the two driveways. Okay, so the two closest uh, points, say you're exiting the front door, yep. left it, left and right will have curbing? Yep, right across the front. Okay. Um, Scott, could you mark that on the plan? Because this does not show that there's actual curbing. Yep, you can add that. Thank you, sir. So if, if there is a, a motion, there'd be um, conditions needed but I'm still a little concerned with being 100% sure that there's not gonna be any drainage off to the neighbors. And so should that happen, I'm not sure that we can even add such condition, but um, I guess this is a question for Rob or Pam. Um, is there some type of verbiage or condition we could put in place that the owner of this property would be responsible should that um, drainage not work? or sufficiently drain out the water? If Actually, Holmgren Engineering is responsible if that doesn't work. Yeah, we've got, we're on the hook for it, Madam Chair. If something, anything at all in, in our world that doesn't work, yeah. the neighbors, the owners, everybody can, and all sometimes right. they do come back on us. It's, it's our fault if it doesn't work yeah. properly. We're telling you it's going to work. All right. Not so, that I want to see that happen. I just don't no. want neighbors to, to suffer any consequences here. So well, Madam Madam we Chair, don't either. Uh, Chair, it's Larry. Yes, Larry. I have a question too, Scott. So on lot B, um, and obviously I assume during the construction process, there's going to be some grading and work to be done on the topography of the land. But I also see you have the uh, proposed infiltration chambers for the roof runoff too. So that should help alleviate any of that water draining towards lot A, correct? Is that the right? We're taking here? we're taking a, a good chunk of the lot of the of the runoff from the house, all of the runoff from the house and, and putting it into the infiltration. So hopefully that uh, you know that lessens the amount of of runoff that's going to get to that parking lot from lot B. You're right. right. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. May, wh where did you say they need to mark the curbing. Is that in the front of the house? Uh, on the drives. front of the house, the proposed new dwelling. This should show a six inch Cape Cod berm. That'll also help prevent people from driving in here if this is yep. brought to the top of the berm. So the front and back. So I have add six inch berm to six inch berm to, I thought that was the back along the parking. That's that's this area, yes. So there's yeah. yep. there's two and places where this has the proposed berm. It just doesn't, it's just not labeled. We need to be specific. Right. This doesn't show the berm, but we need to have it. Put the berm on all three sides of each of those two individual driveways for the, the new two family. Yes. So if there is a motion to approve, we'd need the following conditions for the city engineer to approve first sign off and add the 60 inch berm to the plan for the front and back of the house along the parking. 
Okay. Any other questions? Is there a motion? Actually, I, I do. I have another question. Was that was that curbing or was that a berm for the stipulation there? Um, the berm is different. Cape from Cod berm. berm. Yeah, curbing, but Cape Cod berm. Gotcha. Okay. As we said, it'll be six inches high, just because they you can get three inch, six inch. So we'll go with the six inch high uh, Cape Cod berm. Okay. Thank you. Okay, other questions? I'm just curious. I just, I saw one existing wall in between of two oh. uh, property line. Yep. So how high is this wall and what is exactly? It's, um, it's really just a landscape wall. It's, uh, oh, okay. yeah, it, it's really, it's, it's about a foot high. It's, you know, just a, a little landscape Don't. wall. It is, you know, the property does drop off. Uh, I don't know exactly why they put it there, but somebody just put up a, a 12 inch high wall. This is a landscape feature. Did it, Scott, did it have something to do with the former pool that was right in here? There was a pool that, yeah, there was a pool just beyond the shed there, Rob. So you, you're probably right. I think it was probably to flatten out the, the property so they could put the pool. They did have an above ground pool. Uh, so yeah, you're right. Okay. Surprisingly, Mr. May is correct. That's what it was for. <gasps> This is being recorded, so. Yeah. That's why I'm saying so, it. So Scott, with all seriousness, I know I was joking about sending chocolates before, but you, you are sending weekly emails to the city engineer with no response? More than weekly, yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. You've put forth good effort. Like uh, I said, it's, you know, it's the holidays, so we understand, you know, people have time off and, uh, and all that. So we'll, we'll keep trying, Madam Chair. I mean, we know you're not gonna sign the plans until we get it, so. Uh, I need to keep my clients happy and make sure I do what I can to get you folks to sign the plans. So, okay. Um, Madam that. Chair. Yes. Before anybody makes a motion, this is a hearing and we have two people attendees um, who may be abutters and may want to speak. So um, if uh, those people, Lisa and resident uh, would like to address this application, um, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen and we will turn on your microphone if you have a question or would like to make a statement. Thank you, Rob. So being a public hearing, is there anyone who'd like to speak in favor or opposition of this plan? This is your time to be a star. And with that, I don't see anyone raising their hand, Madam Chair. All right, thank you. Can, is there a motion? Madam motion Chair? To yep. Yeah, can I, I just want to remind you that this is a definitive subdivision. So if you approve this with conditions, I don't know how I type a letter approving it and sending it to the city clerk's office. If you don't know, we sure don't know. So elaborate a little further on that, please. So he, Scott's right. There's a plan that gets signed by you, but that plan doesn't get signed until after the appeal period. Yeah, I, if, if I could just chime so, in, Madam Chair, the, you know, we, we do a lot of residential subdivisions, definitive subdivisions, and this happens all the time in other cities and towns. Uh, you know, where you have consultants reviewing it and it's, it's just uh, your approval. So I, I think the hearing, I think the way it's typically done, the hearing gets closed and your approval doesn't start until we get that letter uh, from whoever you make the approval contingent upon. So Can you add that to the letter, Pam? That well, Pam wouldn't part send part. the letter to the clerk until the what approval he's, comes in. What he's saying is there'll be no letter to the clerk until, exactly. which is fine. Yeah. Okay. That's on the record. That yep. we I think that that's the way we do it in other in other cities and towns. Okay. All right. If Pam says it's fine, then it's fine. <laughs> okay. Is there a motion? Motion to approve definitive subdivision property fifty Farrington Street with the condition of the city engineer's approval and 
condition that a six inch Cape Cod berm be designated on the front of the property in the driveways. Does that cover it? Yes. Second. Okay. Roll call, James Sweeney. Yes. Larry Hassan. Yes. Samantha Royce. Yes. Corita Das. Yes. Tony Gonzalez. Yes. Thank you, folks. You're welcome. Covenant. Security. Is that for Scott? It is for Scott. Sorry, I didn't hear you, Pam. Covenant. Yes, please. Certainly. When we get that far. Exactly. Yep. So. Okay, next site plan approval 1208 West Chestnut Street. Applicant Brockton Area Arc. This got again. All right, Madam Chair. Uh, same situation as the the two previous that were uh, that we've discussed. This is the uh, the Arc property right on West Chestnut and Pearl Street. I'm sure everybody's familiar with the building. Uh, you know, an old warehouse building, older warehouse building, and its its current use and its uh, continued use is a uh, basically a redemption facility. Uh, so the ARC has their clients that go in there and work uh, for the general public to come in and drop off bottles and cans, and they process those and and send them along. So uh, anybody that's either used the facility or driven around it, it's it's kind of a free for all going through the parking lot. Uh, there isn't really great circulation in the uh, the leadership at the AC is uh, and has been just a little bit concerned with the safety not only of the public but more particularly of their clients uh, and kind of being out in the open where they're accepting cans out of your car and people are buzzing through the parking lot. Uh, so they they wanted to make some changes. Uh, the first change they were looking to do was the existing loading dock. Uh, yeah, right there where it says proposed 18 by 18 addition that Rob's kind of circling around. It's an existing loading dock. They're looking to close that loading dock in. So there's an 18 by 18 room addition over that loading dock. And the inside of that, they'll just use it as additional warehouse space. And then they're going to build a new loading dock just, uh, just to the right of that exactly, right where Rob's showing. So trucks can come in and come out and, uh, and pick up the cans. So that was the, the main change to the building. Uh, the second thing that they're doing is adding a little bit of a canopy in a drop-off area. We have a proposed 14 by 16 canopy, which is just what it says. It's just a canopy, so you can drive under it and stay dry in the inclement weather uh, if you were uh, dropping off the, the clients that work there. The vans come in a lot during the day to, to drop the, the folks off and pick them up, so that way there'll be a, a clean, dry drop-off area for the clients right there that's kind of separate from the general public. Uh, so the public will come in further down on West Chestnut Street, right there where Rob's showing. You'll make a quick little tight U-turn there uh, to drop off your cans and, and your cans and head back out on West Chestnut Street. So it it uh, it kind of cleans things up a little bit. Uh, it's a better circulation. You can come in uh, through the the Pasta Benny parking area. Uh, there's a parking easement, so you can get through the parking lot right there where Rob's saying. There's an existing street opening right there on Pearl Street that we're closing off. So nobody will be able to use that. You'll come in through the Pasta Benny parking lot, uh, go that way. You can go right around our building and get back out on West Chestnut. Uh, so overall, as I said, it, it's it's certainly safer for, for the yacht, the customers and their clients. We're providing a little bit extra green space around West Chestnut uh, and at the intersection of West Chestnut and Pearl. Uh, we're defining the parking lot with our vertical granite curbing, and we're uh, hopefully making the circulation a, a safer, uh, a safer situation from from how it is currently, Madam Chair. Uh, having said all that, we're we are adding uh, some drainage to the uh, to the facility right now. There's there's catch basins here and there, but there's really no drainage and really no stormwater management. So we are adding some drainage facilities uh, that would just waiting on the on the city engineer to give us uh, his blessing on that. Uh, that's really a, a quick rundown, Madam Chair. Oh, same scenario then. Yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah, this one, we, we have the engineer's letter from December 6th. We responded on the 8th. 
submitted to the engineering department on December 9th. So uh, and we, we have sat down with him, uh, you know, just to go over his comments, to go over what we're doing. So again, we're, you know, fairly confident that we've checked off all the boxes and made all the, the changes that he was looking for. So we're okay. comfortable with the plan and comfortable in asking you folks for a, a uh, an approval contingent upon his final blessing. And Madam Chair, we have been working with Scott. He has made all the improvements that the planning staff has asked for. Okay, thank you. So yeah. If there is a motion, we would still need the same condition. I don't have any questions. Um, other board members? Madam Chair, I, I, had, I have a question or a couple of questions, Scott, sure. on um, what I'm looking at right now on this map here with the parking. So the proposed that kind of like horseshoe area to the top right. Yes. Who will be using that? Is that for the public use too? Or is that for employees or? Oh, no, that would be for you to come in and, and drive right around and, and, uh, and drop off your cans right there. They would come out, take the cans from your vehicle, give you your money, and then you'll make that U-turn and go back out to West Chestnut okay. Street. So it's really, we have all that parking on West Chestnut and Pearl, but the public is really, uh, the signage will be for the public to come in, come in off of West Chestnut and exit back out through West Chestnut. So hopefully the public does not uh, cut through the property like they do currently, Mr. Hassan. Right. And then, so the entryway going in from Pearl Street over um, Albany's property there, that is for the workers' employees? We would, so, okay. we would encourage it to be more for workers and employees. Right. Obviously, there's not much we can do if you come in that way, but right. we're going to encourage and have signage up to for the public to use West Chestnut Street. Right. Only. Because this is a better setup, you know, on this plan. I just was curious about the, the entry points, but that answers my questions. Thank you. It's, it, it looks good to me. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, the board I have members. a question. I do. Um, I don't know from the outside of this building, does it have uh, lighting on the exterior? Does it have? It does. It does. It's, uh, they kind of get lost in the plan, Mr. Sweeney. But if you look right next to where we have FF equals with those little okay, triangles, like architectural triangles style, like doors. the building up, you know, it's you know, it's a thing of mine, Scott. Yep. Yeah. Nope, I agree. But there are uh, the okay. little symbols for the lights, so there are building lights. Uh, no, no parking lights, but it's it's primarily, a, you know, an eight to four operation. Really, the clients are, are picked up uh, usually right around three o'clock. So even in sure. the dark days of of December and January. There's really not much action going on there at all during. Uh, I'm, during I'm the dock. just Scott. I'm just thinking aesthetically speaking. The yep. you know the building will sit there in the city at nighttime too. <clears throat> so. Um, yeah, so the there are building lights right there at the doorways. Okay, and those, are those architectural or just simply functional. Just functional lights, sir. Okay. And it is fairly well lit. I can kind of see it right out my window now. It's. It's right, certainly right not a dark building. It's not a bright building, but it, it's it's not a dark building. It's lit, uh, you know, well enough for security well, reasons. Um, um, being next to In Good Health, I'm sure it's fairly lit. Right, that side certainly is. Okay. All right, that was my question for you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Other questions. So. Uh, currently, where is the main entry where, uh, where employees enter? Like, um, it's a... it, it, there's really not so much of a main entrance. There's the one entrance on West Chestnut Street, which is uh, pretty much where, there you go. Yep, so Rob's plan shows up there. So right off of West Chestnut, there's a separate entrance with a separate parking lot, uh, you know, with about five or eight parking spaces there. And then there's a landscaped area that separates that parking area from the main parking area uh, on Pearl Street. So uh, so I guess it really depends on which direction you're coming from. If you're coming from the city, you'd probably come in off of West Chestnut Street, uh, which is where most of the public comes in and, and most of the, the circulation and the dropping of cans happens is over on that West Chestnut Street side of the property currently. But there is an opening out onto Pearl Street in addition to the opening uh, right next to Joe's Diner uh, in the Benny's uh, Plaza there. So there's there's kind of two entrances right there. They're only about 30 feet apart from each other. So again, that's not uh, 
not great planning right there, having those two driveways right next to each other leads to a little bit of confusion. So I think by us closing off our entrance on Pearl Street uh, and just having the entrance uh, next to Joe's Diner, it, uh, it does just help the circulation like Mr. Hassan said. Scott, on the ZBA, we approved that sign. Is that the placement right there towards the top of the street there? Yes, I think, uh, yeah, if Rob goes to the other plan, it goes really fast. There you go. Yep. So it's right there. Okay. There's an existing sign uh, a little bit further over, kind of in that big landscaped area. So you folks allowed us to put the sign right there in that new landscaped area. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I forgot. Also, is, that di is that digital? I forgot. It's been a few months now. Uh, it is. Yes. Okay. That's right. Yeah. Yes. See, like there's a dumpster next to the uh, ramp, right? Yes, so there it's is. Kind of, it's kind of encroaching. Like, yeah, that's like if you can move it a little bit. Yeah. yeah you know. Certainly slide it to the left to get it, uh, you know, those yeah. doors swinging. If, yeah, I guess if, if you parked your car there and I swung the door, I'd probably hit your bumper. So, yeah, we could certainly shift it over a little bit to the left. Wouldn't be a bad idea. And it's still within that paved area, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference uh, for us. But it, it'd probably be better to avoid that situation. All right. Other questions? So if there is a motion, we'd need the same condition to have the city engineer sign off. Um, um, Madam Chair? This yeah, is a the public, public hearing? Yeah. Just let me finish this thought, though. Um, okay. And then also, um, if I'm understanding Corita's concern, we would need to sl slide the dumpster a little to the left on the plan. Right. As you look at it, yes. Okay. All right. Go ahead, um, Rob, public meeting. Do you have anyone who'd like uh, to speak? So if any of the attendees would like to make a comment, please use the raise your hand icon at the bottom of your screen. If you hover all the way down, that menu pops up and you'll see a little raise hand icon. And I do not see anyone with a raised hand. Okay. Is there a motion? Motion to approve uh, site plan approval 1208 West Chestnut Street with the condition of the city engineer approval. And um, the dumpster. Oh, sorry. And moving that dumpster over a little bit. Thank you. Is second. there a second? Okay. Roll call, James Sweeney? Yes. Larry Hassan? Yes. Samantha Royce? Yes. Marita Das? Yes. Tony Gonzalez? Yes. Thank you, folks. Happy New Year. Good Thank to see you. you all. Good night. Thank you. Um, Scott, hold on one second. Um, R Rob, was there anyone here for 135 Elliott Street? Um, no, ma'am. Okay. All right. Is there any other business? Thank you, folks. I uh, just want to remind Thank everybody you. that uh, we have another special meeting tomorrow night where we're going discussing the Lovett Brook redevelopment uh, master plan. And um, we hope that that area will see some uh, significant job growth in the near future. So looking forward to seeing you all. See you then. To it. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, James Sweetie? <laughs> yes. Yes. Son. Yes. Samantha? Yes. Sarita? Yes. Tony, yes. Good night, all. Thank you. Thank you all. Bye. Bye.